the Center for Social Justice. This is a brand we've been associated with over the years, for so many years we started it and we have kept faith with doing it every other year. And we usually do it towards the end of our body preparation and approval intervention activities. We usually start our budget intervention from the pre-budget stage through pre-budget memorandum, the medium-term sector strategies which we engage, and the medium-term expenditure framework. Then we do this extensive review, which we will just conclude it. We review the macroeconomic framework, the sectoral strategies, and we also do a pull-out of frivolous expenditure, the two of the documents uh, we are going to review before we lose over the two days. And then we are here today to call all major credible civil society organizations working on the budget for us to review and get together to make some recommendations which will forward both to the executive and the legislature, as well as use it to engage the Nigerian people. We are going to review the entire spectrum of the 2019 budget proposal. Is underlying assumptions, the key projections relating to economic growth, sectoral analysis, and to interrogate whether these provisions will achieve the goals that are stated on paper in various government policies and standards. We are going to look at the pullouts of frivolous, inappropriate, unclear, and wasteful expenditure, that's what we consider them. Yes, we must acknowledge that the frivolities have started reducing compared to previous years. But we still have carryovers of projects that are crafted in a way that only the budget maker can interpret what he intends to spend public resources on. We still have perennial demands for computers, software, cars, repairs of buildings. Again, the budget, some of the budgets are not crafted in such a way as to give a proper understanding of how much has been spent in previous years in ongoing projects. I remember reading the budget of Kaduna State. Uh, Sometimes they will just tell you a project. When they release the project, they will say what was allocated for it in the previous year and what was actually released. So if you are now asking for an extra money, you get an idea of what has transpired. But somehow we see ongoing projects and we see nothing about their little history. We intend to engage both the executive and the legislature, as well as the Nigerian citizen who we consider as the ultimate sovereign because he is the author and source of all the power that those who are elected and appointed hold, just the powers we are donated to them. Beyond the interrogations, we intend to recommend alternative causes of action, project ideas, new sources of revenue, greater revenue realization from existing sources, enhanced transparency and accountability, and we propose to talk about giving every Nigerian a sense of belonging, which is imperative for popular participation in national building. Now, civil society participation in the budgeting process has long been recognized as a necessity which depends reforms and ensures that the country taps all credible ideas for development. Our country is going through difficult times and this participation is most needed. Is most needed. Our participation will be meaning, meaningful if and only if the executive and legislature are ready to engage and we assume that they are if we agree that we are not yet where we ought to be, and the strategies we currently use are not delivering the desired results, then it is time for change. Change in the sense of trying something new. Because a continuation of the old course will only lead to old results which are suboptimal. New executive orders have been made by the president, and the existing laws that guide public finance management have not been fully implemented. Last week, the president told Nigerians to be prepared for tough times in the next four years. But yes. how do we prepare? First, the executive must place all the fiscal cuts about the precarious state of our finances. They should place it on the table for us to plead with to see. Living in denial will no longer help. The second will involve a call for sacrifice. To ride over the tough times, must be, this must be premised on cutting down waste, frivolities and reducing the cost of governance. The third is innovative ideas that will pull the economy by the bootstraps to begin to move in the direction of growth and reduction of inequality. This will involve raising new revenues through such ideas as accounting for money realized from stamp duties. 
or we have had in the previous years is that there's a litigation or there's a misunderstanding that go close to three or four trillion is somewhere hanging in the CBN. We need to find out what exactly is happening and why we cannot resolve that today and tomorrow. Because every time I make a withdrawal from my bank on my personal account, money I work for after paying tax, it reminds me that my money is being taken and there's nobody, I'm not seeing the results and it's not acceptable to me and anybody who suffers that deduction. Increased remittance of operating surplus by MDAs. I dare say it may sound unpopular and Labour may not agree, but we must buy the bullet if we are serious. Removal of subsidy or under recovery from PMS, from petroleum products. Introduction of a road fund which will raise money entirely from toll gates. We must consider an increase in value added tax from 5% to 10%. In view of the fact that our rate is the lowest just the lowest in the sub-region and virtually one of the lowest in the whole world. Review all sector PSC agreements to plug the links. Every day, almost every other month, NATO will come up with those beautiful reports about our failure to review PSC agreements and which at the last time they told us 16 billion had been lost over a period of 10 years, which approximates to about 1.6 billion dollars every year. And here is a country in their need of money. It's just fed for the cameras and to make the headlines, and there and everybody goes to sleep. The leaders pretend they did not <coughs> The full re-engineering of the National Housing Fund, I'll have opportunities to talk about this later. Full cost recovery from railway investments. We are borrowing money from the Chinese to build railways. And we finished building the one between Abuja and uh, Kaduna. And the other day I had the Minister of Transport saying that Government is subventing to the tune of about 40 million naira every month. We are not even doing cost recovery. So from where are we going to get the money to repair? But policy must give way to realism. And we must be told the truth about our finances. We can't continue this populism. It's not going to lead anybody anywhere. And everybody who is complaining he doesn't want to pay more, we need that he needs to pay more for this generation and the generations to come. If we don't want us to buy the bullet now, when our children grow up, they will be asking us questions on what we did during our time. Making health insurance compulsory, we complain there's no money for health. Yet, we insure to Google cars, we can't insure health. Establishing the Health Bank of Nigeria and introducing full value of, for money in public finance management system. If we tap all the available human and material resources, and provide the leadership needed for political reforms. I see a new Nigeria, where the economy grows at a minimum 8% a year, where millions are lifted out of poverty, agricultural yield per hectare increases, and agricultural products benefit from intense beneficiation and value addition. Industries are homing and producing automobiles, electronics, and fast moving consumer products, as software engineers are painting the nation green with new ideas. We have a boy from Yabago who had to Rwanda the other day, and they were very warmly received by that country. But what are we doing with them? It is possible and doable. We only need to agree to do the right thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Center for Social Justice and with great optimism, I welcome you to this summit and hope that we will have fruitful deliberations and the recommendations we make will be acceptable to the powers that be. Otherwise, we have wasted our time and I don't pray we should waste our time. Thank you and welcome. Can we do that again, please? Um, we thank you, the Director of Center for Social Justice, for that wonderful uh, welcome address.